17 points per game off of turnovers in this very young college basketball season. To the starting lineups now for Santa Clara. Clark and Brownridge really drive the engine, but Denzel Johnson's a guy who can score two. Hubbard and Pugh will hit the glass hard. Hubbard is a 6'9 freshman. For Tennessee, Josh Richardson is averaging 18 points a game early on. Armani Moore is getting eight rebounds per contest so far. And Kevin Punter is a guy who can be very dangerous from three-point territory. So just about set for the opening tip here in Orlando. Great to have you along. And here's Kerry Keating, Santa Clara Broncos head coach. She's worked for a number of highly respected bosses. Among them, P.J. Carlissimo, Dave Odom, Buzz Peterson, and Ben Howland. Says he's picked up something very important from each one of those guys. The tempo of this game is going to be very key for both teams. For Santa Clara, severely undersized. They have to collectively rebound the basketball throughout. Tennessee has an advantage down low with their length and athleticism, and they're not going to have that advantage on most nights. Tennessee with the first possession. Here's Armani Moore, 6'5", junior. It can really get to the rim. Tennessee right now with a 1-1 one one record. The jumper by Moore won't fall, and the tip... It's going to be out of play. It'll go the other way to Santa Clara. The Broncos coming in at 2-2. Two and two, And they were drilled in Michigan State just three days ago, 79-52. to 52. They fell behind in that game, Sean, 17-2 on a Spartan blitz, and they never recovered. So tough when you go to the Breslin Center. If you fall behind early to try to climb back up the mountain, there were some positives in the second half. But you see the pressure and how it forces you to initiate your offense further away from the basket. A lot, large part of this pressure is to get you to take time off the shot clock and get you out of your comfort zone look for how, Tennessee. Look how high the Broncos are. Johnson swinging here to the wing and Brownridge who comes in averaging 12 a game. Shot clock down to four and an errant pass right out of play back over to the Volunteers. So that pressure paying some immediate dividends. And a turnover on the opening possession and with this small lineup for Santa Clara, we'll get to the injuries that they have in their front court. They have got to value the basketball each and every possession. So they'll play small. They've lost two bigs, as you point out, and maybe critical losses for the Broncos. We're only shooting 35% from the field. More driving and dishing there into the lane, and that is going to be up and in. Good point of emphasis for Tennessee. As I mentioned, their length and athleticism underneath. It's an area where they feel they can exploit the Broncos. Their first two possessions, they got the ball down low on the block. And Reese dropping in, too, for the first basket of this afternoon. And still to come, we've got Kansas and Rhode Island right after this one at about 2.30 this afternoon. Off the fake Brown Ridge and drops it in, a three-pointer. A great sign for Brownridge, and what I love about him, he's a scorer. He, he can shoot it, yes, from the outside, as you just saw, but he loves to utilize the shot fake and create off the bounce. Sitting 45% beyond the three-point line coming in. Before that make, now he's 11 out of 23. Could be a big weapon today for the Broncos. Just 28% beyond the three-point line coming into today. Carmichael up top. Here's Punter. He can fill it from three-point land. Moore looking inside. Shot clock down to two as he drives in the lane. There's ah! Reese for the stop. That just barely beat the shot clock. Uh, a great spacing out on the floor. As you drive middle, it forces the back line of the defense to rotate over, clears out that space, and allows the flush. Clark up top. 17.5 points a game for the senior out of East Chicago, Indiana. Although he has lately been struggling with his overall shooting. Has it on the way. Quick step there. A little teardrop off the window won't drop. Big battle for the rebound. This is where you expect Tennessee to be the superior team today. On the glass, Reese lines up a long one, but too strong. Another scrap for the rebound, and the ball's come away with that. Carmichael out finding everybody. He's a talented freshman. They have high expectations for him, and down the road, he is going to be the star of the Tennessee program moving forward. He's got great potential. Potential is a dangerous word as a freshman, but I think he'll fulfill it with the way he works every single day. Well, it's a program right now with a very heavy cloud looming over it. Turnover here with 16.34 to go. It'll be Matt Hubbard as he picks up the foul, his first. Donnie Tyndall right now. 
being investigated, the head coach at Tennessee, by the NCAA, not for anything to do with the Tennessee program. We'll detail that in a little bit. It goes back to his days at Southern Mississippi. So he's off to a rocky start, to put it mildly, as Tennessee's first year head coach. And the biggest key for the players is to try to eliminate what's going on outside the program and just focus on what's going on on the court. And I think that's where Josh Richardson really stands out as a leader on this team, an experienced athlete who a year ago, if you, if you recall, they were trying to get a petition to bring Bruce Pearl back in Knoxville, and that loomed over them all season long as they went to the Sweet 16. Gonzo Martin leaving the program to go to Cal. This one up top, long one for Woodridge. And knocks it down. Woodridge can really fire it from long range against Utah State. He was only 3 for 14, 3 for 12 against Michigan State. So against some superior competition, he scuffled with that shot. In a lane more. Good athletic move there to drop into. Uh, Tennessee is continuing to attack the interior of Santa Clara. And this is going to be a problem for Kerry Keating as the season progresses with the lack of numbers that they have in their front court. But as long as you have Jared Brownridge, he can stretch you from the... Southern ...also departed the program. Tyndall had also been investigated by the NCAA at Moorhead State. And that school used self-imposed sanctions to escape more serious punishment. So first-year head coach and a lot of controversy immediately over Tyndall. First half knotted at six. Santa Clara with the basketball here. Coming in at two and two. On the drive, it's Clark, and he's going to take a foul there with 15-15 to go. And that foul against Dominique Woodson. With the smaller lineup for Santa Clara, they've got to be able to space the floor and attack off the bounce. And they found some good quality shots in their half court sets. Both of them knocked down by Brownridge. And somebody else has to score here. This would be the guy you look for. Clark up top. Johnson will swing it. Into the corner. Johnson lofts and hits. Good looking shot for three. And Johnson's got a great personality. He ran over to each both you and I yesterday. Shook our hands. Said hello. Happy Thanksgiving. He is the nephew of former NBA star Gary Payton and the cousin of Travis Davis who played football in Notre Dame and later in the NFL. Actually played with Gary's brother in high school, Brandon Payton, who went on to Oregon State. Very talented player himself. Woodson trying to spin, and he draws the foul. He is going to be a load to handle. It's 6'10", 280. As we give you a look at the bracket, we mentioned that number 11 Kansas faces Rhode Island later on today here on this court. That could be a heck of a matchup. Well, I look at Rhode Island, and if you haven't had the opportunity to see E.C. Matthews, he's a future NBA player. Rhode Island coming off a win versus a ranked Nebraska team. They have a lot of confidence heading into this contest against Kansas later on today. Good look at Michigan State as well a little bit later on this evening. Here from Orlando, the jump shot by Mostella. Won't drop, and a whistle and a foul against Tennessee. That'll go against Woodson. The big transfer from Memphis. That's number two on him. He'll quickly go to the bench and he's been limited he, his hand his left hand has been taped up uh, missed action last time out they need size and girth especially when they get to the SEC conference play he's the guy they count on nearly turned over Pew with a nifty bounce feed Hubbard bottled up down low Clark trying to drive it and another whistle a lot of whistles here early on and Tennessee has been quite foul prone in their first handful of games, that one will go against Mostella. And a big part of that is learning the new system, understanding the defense. And when you when you trap down low on the baseline, and then you've got to try to recover, sometimes that creates long runouts. Long runouts, if you're not chopping your feet and settling down, leads to off-balance reaching and a lot of perimeter fouls right now for Tennessee. And Clark Harass chased out high, back to Brownridge. Broncos certainly a backcourt-driven offense. Johnson back to Brownridge, shot clock down to 16. Another jumper, and that one swished in the corner. You touched on Brandon Clark. He has to be the man today. 31 in the season opener. 15 of those came at the free throw line, though. He has not shot the ball excessively well so far in the season. Just 29% from beyond the arc, but he is a much better shooter than the numbers indicate. So far, Richardson with the ball for the Volunteers. Pretty quiet. 
Santa Clara noisy beyond the three-point line. They are four for four. Richardson, nice-looking jumper for two. And his length should allow him to create off the bounce and elevate up over the defense, as you saw right there. Second team preseason, all SEC. So for the senior, expectations are very high. Brownridge on the attack into the lane, and that's going to be a blocking foul. Foul against Tennessee, and that'll go against Willie Carmichael, the 6'8 freshman, his first. 13 09 to go here in the first half. Tennessee last season, 24 and 13. Under since departed head coach Conzo Martin, Tennessee qualified for the NCAA tournament, went all the way to the Sweet 16. The Vols lost four starters from that unit, and then four players recruited by Martin decided not to stay. Two others transferred. So that left Tennessee really scrambling to sign players. Uh, and Willie Carmichael, who just took the, the foul, is one of those freshmen, though, that they feel can be a big-time player for them. And when you, when you get in the recruiting game late, and you make a coaching change it's always difficult to try to piece together something in year one and I think that's why you've got to have a lot of patience with this team uh, but the style of play that Donnie Tyndale has brought to Knoxville will be appeasing to their fan base and more importantly it's proven to have success everywhere he's gone there's no question about that and he knows the SEC very well too he has a master's degree from LSU he's an assistant coach there in the early days of his career under 13 minutes to play here in the first half. Tennessee with the ball. Mustella got airborne. Jumper by Moore right on target. I love the floor spacing I'm seeing right now to Tennessee. You drive, you get two to come to you. Instead of forcing the shot, they're finding the open player and creating not only a good shot, but a great shot. Now they break the pressure there. Getting Steven Edwards into the game. He's a freshman from the state of Oklahoma. Up top for Cratch. Here's Brownridge again. He's a sophomore, but a real leader out there. Shot clock down to six. The swing. Edwards into the lane. Shot clock down to one. Pugh has to heave it up. The hook shot didn't touch anything. And that's a shot clock violation. Great defensive rotation on that possession for Tennessee. Santa Clara never looked comfortable in that half-court set. Everything looked like they were panicking a little bit. And that's exactly what Donnie Tyndale's team want to do. And you've mentioned it several times. Uh, Tennessee's pressure is forcing Santa Clara to start so high out around mid-court when they get into their half-court offense. And they really try to choke the paint away from you. They don't want to allow the ball to get inside the paint, in particular that elbow area. Richardson and a foul. It's going to be an offensive foul. That's going to go against Armani Moore. We have a break. 14-10. Santa Clara in the lead in game one. They are driven. Be truthful. Yes. You can't wait to get out there in your day off on Saturday and hit the theme parks and get over to the Magic Kingdom. Well, Epcot Center. You know our producer, Scott Gustafson. He, he loves the park as well. He does. And so we have mapped it out. We spent a half hour at dinner the other night yep. mapping out exactly what rides we're going to hit up and how we're going to monopolize the park in the shortest amount of period of time. Reach and foul on Edwards, a 6'2 freshman from Muskogee, Oklahoma. That'll be his first. So back over to the Volunteers. One and one so far with a season opening loss to number 15, VCU. They lost that game by 16. Tennessee last year ranked second in the SEC in scoring, right between Florida and Kentucky, but they have the lowest percentage of returning minutes in the SEC. Jump stop Moore, batted away, and a tough rebound there by Santa Clara, and Edwards, who's only 6-2. The possessions in which Santa Clara hasn't turned over the ball, they have been ultra-efficient. Four of five shooting so far in the early stages of this game, and all four of those makes coming from beyond the arc. Even though several times that shot clock has dwindled down, Black with the dish for Brownridge and off target. And another whistle and a foul against Santa Clara. 10.52 to go. Nate Cratch, the 6'6 sophomore with the push and his first personal. He's come off the bench in every game, all four. Santa Clara with the 14 to 10 lead. The fouls are piling up pretty quickly here, and we expected that might be the case. And both teams want to play fast and when you play fast sometimes you play out of control and that's what leads to fouls Watch 
Richardson, senior out of Edmond, Oklahoma, approaching a thousand career points. He came in just 225 shy of that. Into the lane with the teardrop, a lot of iron, cracks with the rebound. Well, that's a good aggressive move, and I think he's got to start asserting himself a little bit more at the offensive end of this game. Clark tries it on the other end. Boy, it's a big rebound by Pugh to keep it alive. Clark, the bounce speed, a tie up here. Possession arrow will keep it on this end with 10-15 to go in the half. And the story of this game have been the polar opposites of these two teams. Tennessee has scored all their points, essentially going to the basket, being aggressive. Six of their ten points have come in the paint. Meanwhile, for Santa Clara, it's all out on the perimeter. But position rebounding has been good. You again in the lane. Wild shot, but off the backboard and in. First two-point made field goal so far in the game for the Broncos. They extend the lead to 16-10 to 10 over Tennessee. And again, the Kansas Jayhawks on this floor later. Here's Hubs to fire just off the bench, in and out. Well, that was in the cylinder and kicked back outside. Underneath, going for the stuff there, and that play was Hubs. And Jabari McGee, when he checks into the game, the one thing you have to know is he's going to try to get a rebound at both ends of the floor. That is his main purpose for being out on the floor and a nice putback for two. That's what he said. He said, my only reason for being recruited and coming to Tennessee is to get rebounds. I am not a scorer. And a foul here. With 9.26 to go, the foul will go against Santa Clara and Nate Cratch. Well, this is a great drive down the middle. Strong finish. you got to protect the ball. You know there's going to be hands reaching in, but Pugh able to get that tough two underneath and Santa Clara their shot selection so far has been largely behind the arc Tennessee all with inside of it Tennessee 0 for 3 from three-point territory Cratch to the bench with two personals so just under 10 minutes to go in the opening half of our first quarter final great to have you along happy Thanksgiving to you and your family and that's going to be on the line in a turnover for Tennessee as Mustella lined up but he gave it away by stepping on the line right in front of the Bronco bench. Complete mental lapse. Those are the type of turnovers that as a head coach, you just lose your mind over. How do you not know where you are on the floor? Especially when you're lining up to try to get into your shot. And you are a shooter, and Mostella certainly is. He shined in his college debut against VCU with 17 points. Turned over right back to Tennessee. They want to push the tempo at six turnovers. Airborne, oh, nicely done there by Kevin Punter, the junior out of the Bronx. And that is all predicated on the hustle of Jabari McGee at the defensive end of the floor. Stealing that pass and getting it up the floor quickly. Johnson to attack. Wild shot, but a blocking foul. In the act of shooting with 8.45 to go back to that theft moments ago. Uh, here's what you watch, the long diagonal pass. McGee comes off his line, plays it beautifully pass up ahead and then immediately attack the defense you could tell they were unsettled flow across the lane good soft touch by punter and Tennessee brings it within two McGee with a foul to send Johnson to the line Denzel Johnson the senior from Fresno California is actually named after the great Denzel Washington and then several years after Denzel Johnson was born Denzel's dad CJ met the actor and told him the story said that boy is named after you and, and Denzel the actor was absolutely delighted got a great kick out of the story Denzel with a theft in the backcourt off the fake and another foul against Tennessee to put Johnson to the line well you talk about backcourt strength and in the West Coast Conference I think we always start with Gonzaga and for good reason when you look at Gary Bell Jr. and Kevin Pangos four-year starters and what they've meant for that program We saw that last night in the NIT and their win over Georgia uh, But Kerry Keating has a very talented group of players in his backcourt Denzel Johnson is one of them Clark and Brown Rich get a majority of the credit uh, but Johnson can score as well had 26 points against USF back in 2012. He's a guy that can heat up and get going and I like his aggressive approach to this game so far. Foul was on punter his first. Johnson sinks that one so the lead 19 to 14. Johnson with six points. You know how hard it was flipping between games last night. You had Arizona San Diego State a great matchup. Fran Fraschilla on the call there with Sean McDonough. 
And then flipping back over, and Coach Knight was on the call uh, that Georgia can sag again in Madison Square Garden. You were up late because I know you watched every minute. <laughs> Some great action in this feast week in college basketball Thanksgiving tournaments battle for Atlantis a lot of upsets down there Will there be upsets here in Orlando Richardson swerving into the lane tough shot, but he hit it So good when he gets two feet in the paint. And you know what I love about him? he's always going off strong on balance He's got two feet underneath him as he goes up. He's not drifting off of one getting knocked off balance and then missing those shots Clark on the baseline that won't fall big rebound for Tennessee hauled in by McGee so here come the Volunteers, trailing by three here in the first half. Richardson will set up a play in the half court now. His follow-away jumper. Got it! He's starting to heat up. And he heats up. It gets going in a hurry. And look at He's the leader of the team, turning around, being vocal, playing with fire and energy here on Thanksgiving. And his team needs it because Santa Clara has had a very strong start. Clark using the screen. The swing to Johnson. Now Brownridge again and a whistle away from the basketball, tangling up in the lane. And a timeout, seven minutes to go in the half. Tennessee has cut the lead to one. Why? Because Josh Richardson is attacking the paint, being aggressive. He's got. Oh, how cute is that? Uh, absolutely adorable. You see a few of those shots here at Disney World, Florida, don't you? Yes. Now, Tennessee with an opportunity. To take the lead, they last had the lead at four to three. And the Volunteers will get it back to Richardson. He is the hot hand. He's also a guy who plays the classical piano. He says he's a little bit rusty, hasn't practiced much the last couple of years. Here's Punter off the back of the iron. And the rebound tipped out of play. And it'll stay on this end. Uh. Santa Clara undersized coach Keating yelling at his players Making sure they understand they have got to put a body on Every time a shot goes up because they don't have the size or the athletic advantage Through positions one through five out on the floor right now Richardson came in averaging 18 a game wants to slice in again tried to use that backboard and a foul here against Tennessee so that personal will go against Carmichael, number two, on uh, the freshman from Apopka, Florida, and it's one and one time. We knew we'd get to one and one pretty quickly because of the fouls starting to rise, and they have here with 6.33 to go in the half. And that'll send Hubbard to the line. This young man, Matt Hubbard, he came to campus, and I remember talking to Kerry Keating back at the West Coast Conference Media Day in Los Angeles, and I said, so coach, who's really stood out for you? He goes, Matt Hubbard. And he's making shots. He goes, and I didn't know or anticipate him coming in and feeling this comfortable at the Division I level. Uh, but not only has Hubbard made enough shots to be a player that is coming off the bench, but now he's counted on to be the guy in their front court that can score. Now, he really forced into that role into the starting capacity as he'll take a seat right now because of the injuries to the bigs. But he is playing very, very effectively from Colville, Washington. And so it's Santa Clara on top and shooting it well. 21-18. Richardson thought about stepping into that three. Here's Punter again and another whistle. That one away from the basketball. We talked about the injuries that the Broncos suffered. These are big guys who are out today. And you feel bad for Yannick Atanga, who is coming into his senior season and had worked so hard over the offseason, every single day committed to trying to become a better basketball player, regain some of his form that he had in his early career at Santa Clara. And it looks like he could be done for the season. Now, the, the doctor hasn't read it yet, but the preliminary read was a torn ACL. And if that's the case, you sure hope the NCAA will give him an opportunity to finish out his career with a six year of eligibility. Hubs gives it up here. Reese close in, drives in. That won't fall. Got his own miss back. It's out for Richardson. It never touched the rim, though. He'll fire in and out. So Tennessee had a couple of looks there. Nothing dropped. Johnson in full attack mode and a blocking foul with 5.41 to go. Say this for Denzel Johnson. He gets the basketball, he is going in one direction. A straight line driver 
without question. He gets his hands on the ball. He is looking to apply pressure onto that defense. And a good way to attack the zone, by the way, is to get there before it's set up completely. And that's what he did right there, earning himself a trip to the free throw line. Reese with the foul. I'll tell you this, though. Watching him drive and seeing the defense and the way they collapse, if he jump stops, reverse pivots, Brown Ridge was wide open beyond the arc and nobody's around him. So as the game goes on, that's one area you've got to be aware of. If they do have position and they're, and they're cutting you off, be on balance, reverse pivot, get the ball to the shooter at the outside. Look at Santa Clara, 8 out of 10 at the line, so they're hitting them. Tennessee has yet to attempt the free throw. Johnson bumps up the lead to 23 to 18. So just a couple of minutes ago, the Vols had a chance to take the lead. One of the rare moments here in the first half. And now some separation for the Broncos. Carmichael to the bench now for Tennessee. Richardson to walk it across now. Tennessee trying to pick up their second victory of the season. They made it to the finals of the Orlando Classic back in 2008, losing to Gonzaga. At that time, it was the Old Spice Classic. So they've had success here in the past. Here's Moore looking inside. Shot clock down to nine. Hubs. Back for Moore. Probably should have shot it, but the dunk there for Hubs as he drops in two. Uh, Richard a little bit out of position and was trying to tap that one away from behind. He should have slid in and not allowed that ball to get down there, but a good job with the finish for Hubs. So tightening up again, a three-point game here in the first half. Under five to play before the break. It's our first quarterfinal of the Orlando Classic. Sean Farnham, Dave O'Brien with you. And still to come, Kansas against Rhode Island. Rhode Island's already knocked off top 25 Nebraska this season. So that could be an excellent game. Shot clock to two. Clark heaves a long one and drains the three from way downtown. I love the quick ball movement there. Now, I know it's late shot clock execution, an NBA three-pointer by Clark, but they got the ball inside and back out with a quick rotation to find Clark in rhythm. It was their first field goal in five and a half minutes. So it had been a while for the Broncos. Hubs dishing into the lane. More there and a whistle. 4.07 to go in the half. We're going to look at Santa Clara. Get the ball inside. Clark dumps it in. Pass it back out. The defense is scrambling. And when you have a zone scrambling and they're covering the corners that they probably isn't their natural assigned rotation, that's when you can find success. And Clark able to dial it up from the outside. Richard with the foul is first. Puts more at the line. Who's only three out of ten this season at the free throw line. But makes that one. First, their first attempt. Great versatility in his game. Uh, he, he, more naturally, probably a small forward, uh, but been forced in the early stage of the season even to slide down to that, that four spot for the Tennessee Vols. The co captain, very physical guy from Kennesaw, Georgia. Had a big second half against Texas Southern. 11 points all in the second half of that game. More pressure from Tennessee. Richard breaks that. Johnson will back away to give it a good look now. 26-22 Santa Clara. And look, Coach Tindall is, was telling his guys to back up the top of the zone a little bit. Now they're extending it out on this possession. You got to communicate. Bump and a foul here and a whistle against Tennessee. That'll go against punter number two. Santa Clara with a four-point lead here in this quarterfinal. Gone through since last June. Brandon Clark at the line here for Santa Clara, an 88% foul shooter. And front rimming the first one, he started the day 24 out of 27 at the line so far this season. Well, the numbers, you know, clearly on the side of Santa Clara. Uh, all of them except for the number of shots. Tennessee has 23 shot attempts in this game. Santa Clara only has 10. The difference is they've made six of their 10, including five of those from beyond the arc. The volume shooting on the side of Tennessee, success rate and efficiency on the side of Santa Clara. And Tennessee, a program that could really score a season ago in winning 24 games, but they lost a lot of that scoring. Richardson airborne again, left it short. Tough rebound by Hubs, that won't fall. And it comes back to the Broncos. A theft in the backcourt, however, by McGee, and he lays it in. Well, look at the soft touch for the big fellow. Gets the tip away, gets the ball back in. Reverse layup. So the quick hands of the balls cut the lead to three. 
here. Look at little things in a box score. That's two thefts in this game for McGee. Both of them have led the baskets for Tennessee. Brown Ridge so far pretty quiet here in the first half. Clark deep in the corner. Got airborne. It's sloppy there. Brown Ridge comes away with a shot clock down to four. Brown Ridge takes a look. Here's another NBA three. In fact, beyond that distance. Tough rebound. Richard in the lane, but an offensive foul. So no basket. You know, I can't say enough about what Jabari McGee has brought to the table so far in this game. He's gotten two steals. He takes a charge. Watch this. The hustle. A little back tap action. Chases it down. Handle with a soft touch off the glass. A nice job by McGee at that end of the floor. And the great defense down here. I mean, he is just all over the place. Plays with great energy, great passion. Tennessee needs it right now. He went to high school just about 20 miles from Orlando. Another whistle here as Moore draws the foul. Let's give you a look at the Atlantis bracket now. How about Butler and a tremendous win over North Carolina yesterday, taking on Oakland.